What's up, ladies and gentlemen? You're now watching Kinetic Outcome, and we are with Jeff Rotmeyer, founder and CEO of Impact Hong Kong and Love 21 Foundation. That's right. So, Jeff, a little bit of an introduction of yourself when you were a child and how you got here. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's great yeah. to be here with you. Uh, yeah, I came from Vancouver, Canada, and uh, yeah, played uh, played football actually in, in in the states. Went to university, played football, soccer. I went back to Canada afterwards and was kind of looking for things to do and kind of struggling in that. Had a knee injury, uh, which took me to Asia. You know, I had a, a friend introduce uh, teaching English in Korea actually, and I went and taught English in Korea. Met my wife there, got married in Canada, and then we ended up coming to Hong Kong and uh, got a teaching job here in a public school. And yeah, very very early on, I was kind of looking for more to do, more uh, do some more meaningful stuff, and I got involved with the Down syndrome community in coaching soccer. And uh, that's where it kind of all started. You know, that community taught me so much about life and what's important, and about kindness, true kindness. And it was just an amazing experience. Like that hashtag. Exactly. I never would have thought. You know, never would have thought I'd be wearing hashtag kindness matters clothing every day. It wasn't really my thing as a kid. You know, I wasn't the kindest kid. I'm sure. Um, you know, but now here I am wearing this kind of merch every single day. It's kind of bizarre, but it all started really with that single step of wanting to do something and. And it just kind of, you know, went, went, went. Here we are. And uh, you started with Impact HK first, right? No, actually, that was or my was with that Down first. syndrome community, you know, and did that. That was about, gosh, about 14, 15 years ago that I first started this soccer program for them. Um, definitely saw a great need with that community. I saw a community that is full of ability, a community that just is really held back by people that know nothing about them. Like the name Love 21, well, the 21 is from the 21st chromosome, which is responsible for the genetic disorder known as Down syndrome. So, you know, that's an education in itself. But, um, you know, really that experience led to being introduced to the homeless community, um, really going into this park and just having the idea of going there again once a month, inviting friends to join me. And, you know, that turned into a humanitarian movement. We've had almost 10,000 volunteers over the past three years, really. Uh, both charities I started officially on the same day, um, which was crazy, but I couldn't I'm, couldn't be happier that I did it, but it's been a, quite an undertaking and yeah, it's been exciting. Okay. And throughout the process, what was rewarding, but at the same time, what were the major challenges throughout these years? Yeah, I guess the, the challenge, it's, it's always, a, there's a big challenge, you know, running one organization, let alone two, it's always a challenge, it's going to take a lot of hard work. Um, I think my, the, the skills that I learned as a teacher, I think have really helped me a lot in this whole process, being organized, uh, communicating well, um, storytelling, which is very important in charity, I think really getting the message across of who you're helping and why you're doing it is very important. But really, at the end of the day, my greatest challenge that I have is, is just in the hard work you have to put in. You know, we're really at, we're not at a time as, as both the charities are not at a time where we're sitting pretty and we're stabilizing. We're still in growth mode. So every single day is attack. You got to get up very early. You got to work and you got to really push. And that's what we're doing. Um, you know, the benefits and the, and the beautiful moments, that's, that's not hard to find. That's an everyday thing. We're surrounded by an incredibly caring community, not just our volunteers, but also the people we support and work with. You know, we see wins every single day. And it's beautiful, you know, it really gives me the inspiration and the power uh, to keep moving. Okay. And uh, next question is, what advice would you give to people that would want to pursue something that you are doing? Yeah, it's, it's a great question because I yeah. never would have expected to be a CEO of any company, let alone two, right? And that didn't make any sense. And when I first went into the park, for example, to feed the homeless, that was just the goal of going in and feeding the homeless. There was no, there was no home run on that first bat. There was no, you know, we didn't solve homelessness on the first day, right? But it was simply doing something that we cared about, that we were passionate about, and taking a single step towards it. And, you know, that step led to more steps. It led to a second step and a third step. And then along that path, uh, got an education of how we can make a true impact for both of these communities. And that's the advice I give to, to the youth of Hong Kong, is think about something that you care about, that you're passionate about, and take a step towards it. But don't go in there thinking that you're going to hit a home run. You know, go in there with the goal of learning and seeing how you can help more. Next question is, if you had all the power and all the funding, 
and you can implement anything you want, what would you do to further expand what you're working on? That's a great question for both Impact HK and Love 21 because you know, we are shooting for the stars and we are going to tick those boxes of the dream uh, charity. You know, Impact HK especially is really close to that. I'd say we're about two years away from ticking every single box, right? We have the, the shelter program, we've got the food program. You know, we serve 500 meals a day, seven days a week, but that'll soon be a thousand. Uh, we have 140 people in our shelter tonight. Each of those individuals has a caseworker with counseling, mentorship, sport, art classes every day. Um, we're starting football programs, we're traveling, we're camping together. We're really pushing the envelope on how much support we can give. We have a seniors program, drug rehabilitation, employment assistance program, and also right now almost 50% of our full-time staff used to experience homelessness. That number will probably get up to about 80%. You know, that, that's a goal that I have, um, 80%. I think it's a really attainable goal for us because we're really moving very fast in social enterprise. I strongly believe in social enterprise with charities because at the end of the day, I'd rather, I'd rather create income coming in from products and also more employment opportunities for the people we support at the same time. Instead of always have to constantly try and get money in from people, I'd rather create amazing products. Um, so as a charity, Impact HK, I think we will tick every box in how to best support the homeless community. And I can say that primarily because of our education and the education program that we have. Yes, 10,000 volunteers who are learning every day about the homeless community and what they need and, and how we can care for them rather than judge them. And that education program and working with the education with the schools, I think is honestly what sets Impact HK apart even further. We're dedicating a ton of time to work with schools. Right now we work with about 30 schools per year. Soon that will be 100 schools per year. And you know that type of a message in, in the education system is so important for creating change. So I think Impact HK will completely tick that dream box and will be that charity that kind of sets the bar and reinvents charity throughout, throughout the world. Um, Love 21 Foundation as well, we want to tick every single box. We support 100 families right now uh, with, with an incredible range of classes. We have about 50 different classes per week in sport and art. Uh, but we also have an amazing dietary and nutrition program. So these families are not just getting sport, which is obviously not enough. They're getting incredible support with food and, and care and education and dietary support. One-on-one um, -on -one counseling support as well for these parents who have struggled and are struggling. Um, so as a charity, we're really just trying to set the bar high. It's not a dream. Well, we can do this. And we can do this because of just so many caring people who are prioritizing you know, standing up and fighting for these individuals who are unfairly held back in our city. That was a very uh, detailed answer. Yeah. I just wanted to say <laughs> I could feel your uh, fire. I've got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, next question. I, I'm actually phrasing this a little differently because mm -hmm. our usual questions would really match to this. Besides everything else that you do, mm -hmm. uh, I want to get a little in deep. Sure. Hopefully this question would make sense to you. What else keeps you up, waking up every day to fight? That's great. Yeah, no, I fight. I like fighting for people. Uh, I like standing up for individuals who are unfairly judged. Mm. You know, it pisses me off when I see that. You know, I, when I see people of privilege looking down on other individuals who never had the same opportunity as they did, and they judge them and they condemn them, and then they push false narratives about them. And that personally for me drives me crazy. And I wanna stand up for those individuals and I wanna give people opportunities. You know, I've been very lucky in my life to have a great family and great support and friends. And I work with people who didn't. And it's my job to stand up for these individuals and fight for them. And you know, the drive, and yes, we have a lot of, you know, we work with a community that struggles. You know, we work with people who are dying and die. And that's tough. But every day we see wins. Every day we see people who were once those individuals on the ground completely judged and hated. And every day we see them now cooking food for the homeless, helping the street cleaners, walking with the elderly. They're giving back and they're helping and they've got purpose and they're happy. And we see that every day. So the winds are there and, and the inspiration is surrounding me all the time. Really, I'm so grateful for this opportunity. I think gratefulness at the end of the day is my biggest drive. I just feel very, very fortunate to be in this situation, to be able to be a friend and to have great friends around me. And help at the same time. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess uh, for the last question, 
is there anything that you would have us look forward to for the next year or next five years to come? Besides the big vision you talked about, the box to be ticked. Yeah, I mean, as a charity, we're we're opening up our first kitchen in the next couple of months, which will take our food output to at least a thousand meals a day. Um, taking on another six full-time staff off the streets that will work for us. Um, having a massive training program to give people the skills to work in kitchens, who then can graduate into the path of working in with our restaurant and hotel partners. So that's extremely exciting. Um, we're opening our first coffee shop within the UBS office at IFC um, this summer. So we'll have our first coffee shop, hopefully first of many. Um, we're opening up our second um, social enterprise, our, our clothing shop, which we have in Jordan now. We're going to be opening up a second one in Lan Chai, hopefully by the end of this year. And also we're starting a recycling company. Uh, this recycling company will take hard plastics and create uh, useful and great design. Um, so that, that, on, the, on that, that's just for this year. You know, and, and as a charity, you know, we really have to strengthen a lot um, in everything we're doing, especially in our mental health support, drug rehabilitation. Uh, but it's, it's super exciting. Um, Love 21, we just continue to, to expand. We're really growing well. We've got a great team there as well. Uh, our counseling support for the parents has been amazing. We're, just gonna, we're really going to expand on that. Um, the one-on-one -on -one support for the parents, but also the peer counseling and, and that support, we've seen just incredible benefits because at the end of the day, the better you support the parent, that's just going to directly result in more care for that child. And we're just seeing really exciting stuff there. And we just want to keep smashing minds. You know, we just want to keep busting heads and smashing these social stigmas that hold these people back and, and limit their growth. And that's what you're going to see. You're just going to see these two charities continue to smash it. And, and we can do so again just because of this amazing, caring community in Hong Kong. Before we end it, I have something to add to that. Do you study about subconscious and conscious programming? No. Don't mind? No, no. Check it out for children as well mm. from their age zero to seven mm. is their programming stage. Oh, yes. yes. Right. So that's very important. Sure. And if we impact the families, next generations will be better. So true. So yeah. true. You know, it's uh, it's actually very related to the, the homeless community that we support because, you know, these individuals, uh, many of them had no families. They had no parents. They had no love. And the lack of love and that lack of care and nurturing as a child has directly resulted in their trauma and, and, and where they are today. Um, so we work with individuals who suffer from addiction, which is a mental health crisis. And, you know, we just do the best we can to love people, you know, and people need love. And when people usually think about helping the homeless, they think of shelters, they think of an easy fix, but it's not. At the end of the day, if you don't have that one-on-one -on -one care, it just doesn't work. So yeah, that's what we try to focus on. Yeah, I believe it's all about love and happiness first and everything else comes to place. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Rotmeyer, Kindness Matters, Impact Hong Kong, Love 21 Foundation. I'm going to put everything in the description box, so make sure you check it out. Hector Temel, Kinetic.com. Pleasure. Thanks again. Thanks, everybody. Our aim is to provide value. So if you like what you watched, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I'm also a financial advisor based in Hong Kong, so feel free to check the description box for my details and email or DM. And if ever you need video and photography services, the phenomenal videos you're watching right now are filmed by Edry Mendoza. Lastly, if you love hip-hop music, rap, R&B, singing, whichever that sounds amazing to your ears because I always do a lot of experiments with it, feel free to drop by my channel at SCF Saint or Saint Crossfade. Appreciate you for being part of this episode and more to come. Till next time.